Hey and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about how the Remarkable 2 has been working for me after a year. I cannot believe how fast time has flown by. This YouTube adventure started when I couldn't find the videos that I was looking for and I ended up just creating the ones that I couldn't find. So for those of you who have subscribed early on, it really has made a difference and I wanted to say thank you. It's encouraged me to keep going. On that note, give this video a thumbs up so it'll help other people find this video through the YouTube algorithms. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe to be notified whenever I post more videos about tips and tricks. There was so much information that I wanted to share here today that I had to break this video out into a two-part series. Part one is all about tech, hardware, and specs. Part two is the application of everything, so think usability and experience and you get to see everything in action. I'm really looking forward to this, so let's get started. Tech and hardware. Just to go over some of the basics, the Remarkable is remarkably thin at 187 by 246 by 4.7 millimeters. It's very thin and it weighs approximately 403.5 grams. It is very light. It has a 1.2 gigahertz dual core arm and all this means is that it performs a single operation at a time, which means it has lower latency, and what you care about is quicker response time. This operates on a Linux-based OS called Codex. It is a second generation canvas that is a monochrome digital paper display, so it doesn't include colors when you're viewing it on the tablet itself. You'll see black, gray, and white. However, you are now able to export color. The resolution is 1,872 by 1,404, which is just 226 dpi. This is partially powered by Eaton Carta technology, and it has a multi-point captive touch. For battery life, the Remarkable should last you up to about two weeks on standby. The majority of what I do every day is mostly taking notes, so I don't use my Remarkable much to read, mostly because I love the library and will read a lot of physical books. So quick PSA, get your library card and use it. Currently, I have some articles and summaries just filed into a section called read in case I have nothing else to do on a plane or wherever I'm at. But to be honest, I don't even think about battery life very much because I charge it so infrequently. And whenever I end up plugging it in, I usually plug it in <laughs> below 3% and it takes me at least um, two weeks to get such a low percentage. For those of you wondering how long it takes me to charge, it takes me a while. If I leave it plugged in right before I go to sleep overnight, it usually gets to about 80% by the time I'm ready to use it. And also, one thing I've noticed is that I haven't really heard many people say that the Remarkable lasts that long for them, but my phone also holds a long charge so it could just be me. In terms of software updates, I haven't had any issues. Uh, so far, I've really liked the changes that the Remarkable team has made because I feel that it's more intuitive now. Uh, for example, you used to have to click files to get back to the main screen, but now you can just use a swipe motion and it's a lot easier. Memory and storage. So the Remarkable has a 1GB LPDDR3 SD RAM and an 8GB internal storage capacity. I personally feel like I have a lot of space. I like to delete things if it's not working for me anymore. So if any of you are having memory or storage issues, please let me know down in the comments below. Durability. My Remarkable at first glance has no imperfections. It stays clean, but whenever I clean my computers with the technology cloth, I'll also wipe my Remarkable down. I initially thought that using the pen on the surface would eventually show some wear and tear but it looks the same from when I bought it over a year ago. The back, however, is a different story. I don't always use the portfolio and I'm fairly rough with it in transportation. Um, it's been very sturdy and great and it was only recently that I noticed one of the grips is missing. I don't actually turn it around because I'm so focused on the content that I put inside and I'm also a type A person if you can't tell already, and imperfections usually bother me, especially aesthetically on technology, but it hasn't been a problem, luckily. I don't even think I'll ask for a replacement. All right, I will be honest, I've dropped my Remarkable one time, 
And I'm not a clumsy person, so I feel like that may be why I'm not dealing with some of these issues that other people have said they've had internally. Marker and Marker Plus. So for the specs on the markers, these don't have to charge at all. So you don't have to do any setup, there's no pairing, it just works right away. The marker tip is apparently high friction and there's also a tilt detection. Not sure exactly what that is, but while we're on the topic of the tips, a lot of people have asked me how many tips have I used? And as you can see, it's not many. Early on in my unboxing video, someone told me that you can use a file to reuse those tips, but I haven't had to do that at all. And honestly, I feel like I have a life supply. Another person commented and mentioned that I use a lot of pressure when I write, and I would think that pressing down harder would lead to me going through more of the tips, but it doesn't seem to be the case at all, luckily. For the Marker Plus, um, I like the weight and feel of it, but I don't use the eraser because I got used to writing with the original marker. I also made a video of my initial reaction on the Marker Plus. Um, I haven't had any other issues, but you can definitely go back and see my video on the Marker versus Marker Plus. For connectivity, Wi-Fi is great. I have not had any issues and it remembers the location, so I haven't had to input passwords multiple times. Um, switching to airplane mode when I travel has been also very easy and something I don't have to think twice about. Um, my Remarkable syncs very quickly when I make updates and most times I don't pay attention to it. I had done a multiple part series at work where I had taught some note taking and some other topics and at the time of my presentation I had used the beta version of the Remarkable Live and it worked the first time and then completely didn't work the second time uh, as the second part of the series the following week and it really screwed me over in the presentation. Um, I've tried it recently and it seems to be working very well. Um, I'm really looking forward to some of the new functionality and updates that the Remarkable team keeps making. Functionality, page overview, swipe down to go back, page to the left and right, pinch to zoom, traveling with it. So I have global entry which gives me TSA pre-check and I don't ever have to take it out of my purse or carry on. Um, it fits right into my purse and I can just take it anywhere with me. Let me know down in the comments what other questions you have on the hardware and specs for the Remarkable 2. And look out for my next video on part 2 where I'll go over usability, reliability, how I'm using it, and more after using it for over a year. Thanks!